Well, good evening, everyone. This is Bill Breeden, and uh, welcome to Constellation Tour number 12. Tonight, we're going to talk about Canis Venatici. Let me get my cheat sheet out here. We're going to talk about Canis Venatici, the hunting dogs. This is one of the most obscure but at the same time, one of the most observed parts of the sky by amateur astronomers. So I think you're going to really enjoy tonight's presentation. My paperwork all here. All right. Um, this is the 12th tour of my Constellation series. I have Stellarium that I'm using here. I've got it set up for a 60 degree field of view, which simulates the uh, view you get by naked eye. And I've got it set for April the 25th at 9.19 p.m. So I have it set for late April because Canis Venetici is best viewed in the springtime, even though it's far enough north where it's, it is visible much of the year. But it is best viewed April, May, and June. So I've picked late April for the presentation tonight. So... The common name for Canis Venetici is the hunting dogs, but I've always just called it Canis Venetici. So let's find it in the sky. Um, it is near the Big Dipper. So we're going to look north. We've got, we've got our setup here for north. Here's the north star right here. And in the spring, the Big Dipper is really high up. It's near the 12 o'clock position on our clock here. So, where is Canis Venetici? The way I always find it is by looking at the arc of the Big Dipper. And you have to imagine the, the Dipper is right side up and that you've got the, the tip of the handle here. Now imagine that you've got something dripping off the handle. It would be dripping downward. Remember, this is upside down in the sky tonight. So downward would be up. And the first bright star you come to right here that is Cor Caroli, um, also known as Alpha Canis Venetici. So you have found the constellation Canis Venetici simply by looking what would be below the handle of the Big Dipper if it was right side up. So let's have a look at the constellation on our, on our software here. Now it's shown here as simply a line connecting two stars. You can see that's Cor Caroli right there. And then we have one other fainter star at the other end, uh, Beta, Canis, uh, Beta Canis Venetici, um, or Chera. I never knew the name of that. I've, I've always known Cor Caroli. I never knew the name of the Beta star. So, So this, this whole area of the sky below the Big Dipper, below the curve of the Big Dipper's handle, that whole area of sky is Canis Venetici. It's a decent sized constellation. And there, the, besides Cor Caroli, there really, there really aren't any other stars to catch your eye. Um, but that being said, Canis Venetici is one of the most observed constellations in the sky because there are a lot of really, really nice deep sky objects there. And Cor Caroli itself is a, is a gorgeous double star. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at Cor Caroli. Let's start there. Now through the finder scope, it doesn't quite split. You can see a faint companion there. Okay. And through a 26 millimeter eyepiece, it doesn't appear to split either. But looks are deceiving. 
If you put even a medium power eyepiece in, say a 15 millimeter or so, you get a gorgeous blue and gold double star. Cor Coroli is one of the prettiest double stars in the northern sky. And it is the first double star I ever saw from my own backyard. Um, it, the Big Dipper was sort of behind behind a tree, and Cor Coroli was visible. So I pointed my scope at it because I had it on a list of double stars, and I was blown away. I mean, it's it's it competes with Alberio. It's really pretty. It's mag it's magnitude two point eight. It is 110 light years away. So point your telescope at Cor Coroli. So let's go over how to find it again. Here's the Big Dipper here. And imagine the Big Dipper is upright, right side up. and just draw a line coming straight down off of the tip of the handle, what would be downward if the Big Dipper was right side up. And the first bright star you come to is Cor Coroli. It's pretty easy to find. And that whole area of the sky below the Big Dipper's handle is the constellation Canis Venetici. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the classic figures. There's the two hunting dogs that make up the constellation. And it looks like the, the two stars, Alpha and Beta, are simply the eyes, or near the eyes, of the two hunting dogs together. So pretty easy to visualize. I mean, the rest of the stars that make up the dogs must be really faint because they're not showing up from the suburbs. But with the two bright, with the two stars, you can see at least you get the two dogs. Okay, there are plenty of deep sky objects within the boundaries of Canis Venetici. So, before we look for some deep sky objects, let's let's make it dark. Let's get out to a dark sky site. There we go. Okay, we're facing north. Here's the North Star. Glorious dark sky. This is my favorite part. If you can watch this on a big screen in a darkened room, it really does make an impression. Here's the Little Dipper here. And in late April, we've got the Big Dipper high overhead turned upside down at the, about the 12 o'clock position on our clock. And we come down off the handle and go what would be downward, and there's Cor Coroli. So there's our boundaries. There's There are the stars of Canis Venetici seen from a dark site. So here are the two dogs here. Let's see, I'm not sure how they how they draw them, but just have to accept it. It's fine with me. Okay, let's search for some Messier objects in uh, Canis Venetici, and there's some well-known ones here. Let's start with M3. It's a globular cluster. There we see it through the finder scope. M3 is really, really a nice sixth magnitude globular cluster. It is 32,000 light years away. And through a 26, here, let's switch that. There we go. There's a view through a 26 millimeter plossal. Outstanding globular cluster. And again, most when most people are observing these deep sky objects in Canis Venetici, they're they're using the Big Dipper as a guidepost because it's it's right next to it. But they these are these are in uh, in Canis Venetici. 
and we have to give the constellation its due credit. Okay, next up in Canis Venetici is the, it needs no introduction, it's M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. So let's try to find that without without using the, the uh, go-to. It's right off the tip of the Big Dipper's handle. And basically, as soon as you leave the, the handle of the Big Dipper going down, what would be downward, that's you're in the realm of Canis Venetici. So if I was pointing my scope in this direction, looking for the Whirlpool Galaxy, I would find it here I believe no that says star let's see there it is okay so there's a there's a star in that field but um, here we go here's the whirlpool galaxy or m51 it is 23 million light years away so you're you're looking out of the milky way and at a distant galaxy Let's look at it through the eyepiece. This has a companion galaxy next to it. Let's see if we can get a little closer to it. There we go. Here's M51 and here's its companion galaxy. I'm not sure it's labeled here in the software. So that's M51. Amateur astronomers spend a lot of time observing M51. Okay, we have another Messier object in Canis Venetici, M63. And for that, we're going to do a search. You can see it's not far from M51. And here's your view of M63 through the finder scope. M63 is 36 million light years away, so it's further away than, than the Whirlpool Galaxy. And you can see the Whirlpool Galaxy M51 is right here. So these two galaxies are pretty close to each other in the sky even though M63 is quite a bit farther away. It's, magnet, it's ninth magnitude. So certainly reachable from a reasonably dark location, maybe the uh, outer limits of the suburbs. Okay, we have another Messier object to find in Canis Venetici. As I said, this is a glorious part of the sky. Uh, M94. And it's near, the, it's near M63, which is awesome. So here is M94, and it is only 16 million light years away. So it's actually closer to Earth than M51, and it's magnitude 8.2. It looks like it looks like it's a face-on galaxy, which makes them a little harder to see because when they're face-on, their light is spread across a larger part of the sky, making it fainter and larger. So you may need to increase the magnification. And here's the view through a 14 millimeter plossel. Okay, we go back to our naked eye view of Canis Venetici. Let's remember where, what part of the sky it is. Here's the Big Dipper. Here's the curve of the handle and this whole part of the sky right here that contains all these glorious galaxies. We've got one more to show you. It's M106.
from M106 is 22 million light years away. So again, these are, as galaxies go, they're not, they're not real, real far away. But other than that, yeah, they're, they're, you're, you're looking into deep space. It's incredible. So here's a view of M106 through a 14 millimeter eyepiece. It looks like a grand design spiral. Okay, this concludes my tour of Canis Venetici. I hope you have enjoyed this tour. Good night and good seeing.